Alright, that's good. I'm gonna go back on that. I want to get promoted. Okay, you want to get promoted, but you're supposed to be taking care of your airmen. How well, dare you think about yourself? I'm not. I mean, I gotta take care of myself. If I don't take care of myself, I can't take care of them. Alright, those two also are not mutually exclusive. You know, just like the the core values. You can take care of your airmen, and you can take care of yourself at the same time. Um, now, when you start putting yourself in for awards that you should put one of your people in for, you know, maybe it's a little bit shady. But, uh, but you are, I understand exactly what you're saying. You've you got to take care of yourself, all right? You absolutely do, because it's not a guarantee that anybody else is going to. In fact, uh, let me give an example. I had a, uh, a tech sergeant working for me that was a tech sergeant when I was a senior airman on my first deployment. And he, uh, he, he wasn't necessarily my direct supervisor out there, but I watched him work. You know, he had some things he could work on, but he was technically very, very knowledgeable, knew a lot of things, but, you know, had some, had some issues with, uh, with leadership and just argued a lot, got into trouble every once in a while, but good guy, right? Well, now, here we are, 10 years later, he's working for me. And, uh, and he comes to me and says, uh, hey, I want, I want to be a supervisor, dang it. I wasn't a supervisor 10 years ago when you worked for me, and I'm still not a supervisor. And I said, all right, well, this is what you need to do. And we sat down and talked about, you know, his personal development. He was great, taking great care of his airmen, but he was not taking care of himself. He hadn't finished his CCAF. He hadn't finished his PME. He wasn't putting himself in positions to, to look like he's doing a good job. All right? So he wasn't taking care of his own personal and professional development. Even though he was a great airman, he was missing that, that side of it. So we've talked about education uh, a little bit, but what else is there besides education? There's more to professional development than just education. Leadership skills, while we're here. Leadership skills, what else? Good job. Networking. Okay, yeah, absolutely. A lot of times in the Air Force Reserves, half of our problem is just not knowing who our resources are. All right? And when you get those resources, if I could make a recommendation, write it down somewhere. Hey, this guy works at, you know, at AFRC in, in uh, I don't know, in finance, let's say, for example. And he was an awesome resource when my finance guy was struggling with something. Or this lady works in the MPF, and she can help people, you know, get whatever problem straightened out. Make a list for yourself and keep those resources so that you know where to refer back to and you're not always scrambling to find people. So, has anybody had an example or an experience with personal development that helped them in their Air Force career? <coughs> I don't want to do more jumping jacks. <laughs> I mean, as far as people helping us? No, something you did to help yourself and it benefited you in the Air Force. No, all about this class. Yeah. This this class would be something, absolutely. Yeah, it's not mandatory. Uh, you say like not really classes, but I did a year over with uh, the uh, Afghan unit that stood up here mm -hmm. uh, when they originally started up, and it was kind of learning from the right side of ammo, look at everything else. So it's kind of interesting. That's a great example. Opening yourself up to new new opportunities. And I'll tell you what that that uh, I, I'd call that joint service. I guess that that joint service experience is going to give you. It's going to yield huge gains in the future. I, I'm sure of that. Except for the two that were <laughs> so That was from here. Right? <laughs> 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 they found one. They found one. Yeah. 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 Trying to get into Canada. Uh, or was it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> West Virginia. West Virginia. They found him. That's good. Yeah. He wanted to solve. So, does anybody in here have anything that they've thought? You know what? This would help me in the Air Force. I'm gonna, I'm gonna start this sometime, and they just haven't got around to it. Yeah. What's the example? Uh, I have my bachelor's degree, but I never put the education into my stuff. So it looks like I don't even have a CCAF or a bachelor's. That's a great example. Should we go through that smart thing? No. <laughs> okay. All right. We'll do it tomorrow. <laughs> hey, that's time bound. Good. Let's get it. 
Um, so maybe you want to learn your um, you want to learn a new hobby or a new skill. Um, maybe it's it's painting. Maybe it's singing. So you can sing in retirement. You want to sing the national anthem or banquets, basketball games. I don't know. Um, maybe you want to a research medical condition that people in your family have that you can talk to people in your unit about. Uh, maybe you decide to take a, a class, even, you already, even though you already have your bachelor's in your CCAF. Maybe you want to take a class that's going to help you in your AFSC, help you in your civilian job. I mean, there's so many things we can do to improve personally and professionally. Um, the, the point is, is that putting in time to learn things all the time yields really, really big rewards. All right, I'm going to go over one more um, mnemonic. I'm going to have somebody else come up and write for me. Not because you did a bad job, but just because somebody else needs to stand up. Okay, this time I'm going to have you write down master. See how I learned from that? I'm going to show, I'm going to say it. I pointed at it. I thought about letting them feel it. <laughs> Okay, so this stands for motivation. So motivation requires a, a lifelong desire to continue to learn. You have to have that desire to, to actually act, not just to want something to happen. You have to acquire the information, whether it's through books, through taking a class, maybe you're just reading it on Wikipedia. Maybe you're, uh, you're talking to somebody that already knows a lot about it. You're gonna search out ways that you can use it. That's the S, search. I guess I got acquired. 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 Oh, he's a good spell. <laughs> <laughs> huh? I would have missed the C, yeah. And maybe the Q, too. Who knows? <laughs> so you're going to search out ways um, to, to find personal meaning in it, find ways that it applies to your life. Um, learning is all about, about applying things that we're taught or, or experience into our lives. It doesn't do us any good to know anything if we don't put it into practice. And then uh, well, trick, search, search is fine. And uh, trigger is what the T is going to stand for. Human beings are notoriously bad at retaining information. So you cannot, you will not remember everything you read, hear, and experience. But you can help trigger recole recollection in a variety of ways. You can take notes, you can practice, you can discuss, you can review, um, you can experiment with new ideas and, and see how it applies. Um, examine. We need to regularly examine the knowledge that we have. We have to keep an open mind and realize we don't know everything. And, and we just have to check the premise through which we evaluate our lives. You have to make sure that that what we, our perception of reality is the world's perception of reality. Uh, talk to others, see their point of view. And then finally would be reflect. So we should reflect on our learning, think about how and why we learned, uh, how we felt about it, and learn from our mistakes. So, let's see. Sorry to stand up. Sir. How do you think Personal development affects leadership. How does it affect leadership? Yeah. The more you develop, the more you can help your airmen develop. That is a fantastic answer. When it comes <laughs> down to it, your, your mentoring and leadership abilities are limited only and by your more, own more abilities. You set an example. Absolutely. Anybody else? Well, people flock together. If you have a bunch of people that are educated, you get somebody that's not, they're going to want to get educated and trained. So people flock together. So that way, you know, if you have a bad seat, they're going to want to move rides up to that. Or <laughs> <laughs> Not always. Or you can be a nice guy. And then you won't show up. Oh. You just kick them out. Send them to a different squadron, right? Yeah. Send them back. Send them to the maximum. No. <laughs> you you're, you're, but on. you're absolutely right. You're going to be that positive example, all right? You don't want to limit your airmen because of your own limiting factors. So I also just want to go over real fast. I mean, 
just some of the classes that are available to us. I mean, most most people in here, I think all people have been in here, have been through ALS. Um, there's the non-commissioned officer academy you take it in residence, or you can take a correspondence. The senior non-commissioned officer academy, they're at Maxwell, right? That's it. Um, there's this course, the NCOLDC course. There's also a senior NCOLDC course that's available later on. There's a chief's orientation course of the professional development, uh, the professional development center. Center. That's what it is. It's like PDC. PDC. I kept thinking Port Dog Challenge. Hey. Um, <laughs> it's a real thing. Um, the PDC. Uh, they have the chief orientation course, the command chief course. There's the senior joint enlisted professional military education course. Now two parts. Can you say that five times fast? S E P J M. S E J P M. S E J P M. Not the acronym. Senior enlisted joint professional military education. There you go. No, I can't say five times fast. I can't say one time fast. Just wanted to make sure I wasn't the only one. Which is a really, really awesome deal because I mean, once you're eligible to sign up for it, you can't sign up for it as a tech quite can you? You can now. Okay, so you can't sign up for it as a tech two, They just split it recently into two. So there is, uh, the first one you do as a tech and master or master, and the second one you do as a senior or chief. So that's been in the last couple of months, I think, that that change happened. So it's it's a really neat course. It gives you an opportunity to go through some stuff that you wouldn't normally see, and it looks fantastic on a resume. And it's just another opportunity to learn. And th we've talked about the CCAF and how we have those opportunities. There's other associate's degrees that you can get through a traditional or community college besides the community college of the Air Force. Bachelor's degrees and master's degrees. They can all help you really, really move towards those goals that you really want. And if you're motivated, and I, I hope you are, you can go ahead and get a doctorate if you want. Eastern medicine, whatever it is that you want to study, all right? You, you can go out and you get it done. But the point is, is that I love the point that you made. Start standing. And that is, our limitations and, and our lack of knowledge only limits our airmen. All right. So, professional development is and personal development isn't just part of helping ourselves out, but it is also part of helping our airmen out. Taking care of ourselves is helping our airmen as well. Okay. Does anybody have <coughs> any questions? Okay. That was a brutal, brutal block. I appreciate you guys staying with me for the most part. We're going to take. Uh, a break.